Today on Judge Faith, a fight between these brothers over who spent whose money and on what. He owed me. The reason I spent it was because Gerald would have took the money and went to the dope man and smoked it up. Was there you know? an issue with drugs going on with you uh, at the time? Be before that, before the accident, yes, it was. He but what's your actually, status now? Uh, right now, the last time I used was maybe about two weeks ago. And later, someone will pay the price in this argument over nickels and dimes. You have a tenant who's lived in your home, mm -hmm. and you know that a tenant is only responsible for damages beyond normal wear and tear. The reason those are left out on the porch is because during our so-called walkthrough, she locked me out of the house before I could put them back up in the bathroom. And I didn't charge her to be put them back up. I, but I that offered so nice of you. I didn't. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Gerald Clipper says he asked the defendant to hold some of his money until he was able to open a bank account. However, when time came to ask for his money back, he discovered that the defendant had spent the money on bills. The plaintiff is suing his brother for the return of his funds. Defendant Kenneth Clipper says that after he fell on hard times, he needed the money for food and bills to support his family. He also feels that he was owed the money because of all the years he had helped his brother financially without ever being reimbursed. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Clipper versus Clipper. Thank you, Barbara. Gerald Clipper? Yes, ma'am. You are suing your brother, Kenneth Clipper, for $3,223 you say he owes you? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, why don't we start from the beginning, sir? Tell me what's going on between the two of you. Was, what happened was um, I'm suing my brother for that amount because I had an accident at work. Okay, you had an accident? Yes, ma'am, I did. At work, and let's back up a little bit. Prior yes, to that, what was your relationship with your brother like? Uh, we was real close. We've always been close, uh, real tight, uh, look similar. It's, I'm a little taller, but um, we we just been so close all our lives, you know. Do you have other siblings? Yes, I do. Oh, how many? I have three other brothers and one sister. Okay, and who's the oldest out of the two of you? I am. You are? Okay. How would you describe your relationship? I would say, you know, prior to that, we were close. We were close in their family, mm -hmm. but that, that changed with this incident. With this case? Yes. Okay. Because I understand from your case, you came into some money. Yes, ma'am, I did. And you gave some money to your to, siblings, yes. and then you loaned some money as well. Yes, ma'am, I did. And, and you say you haven't been paid back that money from your brother. Yes. And so Take me to the beginning to how you came into a sum of money and what happened. Well, I had an accident at work. Uh, I was off work. Uh, I had first to second degree burns on my whole face. Mm. Uh, well, what happened at work? Uh, I was cooking some rice upon me putting my strainer in the sink from where I was cooking the rice that I turned with a big pot. And so I turned, tur as I turned to the left here, I had the pot in my hand, I tripped over a mat as I tripped over the mat, so I went down to the floor with it. As I hit the ground, I messed my shoulder up here a little bit, and I had uh, first and second degree burns on my face and my left arm. Did you sue your job at that yes, point? Yes, I did, yes. Okay, and according to your complaint, you received a settlement about a year later in July of 2012? Yes, ma'am, And I did. how much was that settlement? Uh, the total amount was $30,000. Um, Were you healed from all of your injuries from the accident? Mentally, no. Mm -hmm. Physically, it's kind of gotten a little bit better over, over the past year. Okay. But you recovered, I'm and you're recovered. here. I'm, I'm here, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. all right. And so what happens next? So you get this lump sum settlement. Yes, ma'am. And you start to disperse some funds. Tell me what happened. Upon getting the settlement, I figured, well, I'll go down and see my daughter, see my grandkids, you know, spend a little time with them, spend a little money. Ken had asked me before when he knew it. He knew the settlement was coming. He asked me, would I uh, loan him 5000 I said, I'll give you 1000 and I said, I know you're in financial problems or whatever, so I'll loan you a thousand. He says, Yeah, that's pretty good. So I said, you give him one thousand, you loan him loan an additional him. thousand. Did yes, he I tell did. you that? Yes, he did tell me that. Well, at that initial time that he got his settlement, I was laid off, and I was in a big bind. I was okay. in a major, major bind. I have two children, a wife. 
I had rent to pay, car note was backed up three months. What were you doing for a living at the time? I was an um, operations uh, manager for a company. So at that time, you know, all of this backed up. I went through all my <coughs> 401k, went through all my savings, and me being the good brother that has helped him out throughout his life. Jero has been kind of like just to screw up other siblings. He hasn't maintained a job. I'm giving him 20, 40, 50, $100 here and there, paying for various things. So at my time of need, I felt like he owed me that. He owed me 10 times more than that than what I've done for him over the years. But it's a sibling thing, and I never looked at it as, you know, hey, I'm keeping track of all of this that I'm doing for you as your brother. Well, it kind of sounds like you are. Well, I wasn't. I don't have I don't have documents showing all of these you know various plane tickets that I purchased or all the hundred dollar bills you know that I slipped him. And you feel like he owes you this money? Oh, he owes me probably. But you didn't have a discussion with him about that, right? We had already agreed upon him holding some money for me, approximately seven to ten thousand dollars. So what happened was wait, he... wait. So you you wanted him to hold yeah, just some hold money, money for you? Yes, ma'am. And what do you mean by hold? Five hundred dollars. I'm sorry. It was seven thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, and why did you need him to do that? Uh, because I didn't know where I was going to be at, because I was in the process of moving to Texas, which why was... him? Why why trust I, him with seventy five hundred dollars? And where I, was he I, supposed I, to keep it under his mattress? Coming up on Judge Faith. Ken calls me and says, "Look, I spent your money. I almost fainted. I I couldn't tell you. I was, my knees got buckled. I said, "Oh Lord." And later. Who was responsible for maintaining the lawn? Mm -hmm. And the lease did state clearly that she was responsible for maintaining the yard. Correct, and she did not honor that. But, but then there's a point where you take over the responsibilities because for the yard. Because she neglected the lawn. She wasn't going to do it. Plaintiff Gerald Clipper is suing his brother for the return of money that he was supposed to be holding for the plaintiff, but ended up spending on bills instead. Defendant Kenneth Clipper says that the money was owed to him because of all the years he helped his brother financially without ever being paid back. The, the agreement was he would at some point come back and get his money, right? Yes, correct. Okay, that was the agreement. Yes. So what happens? I called him and I says, look, Ken, uh, I need that money so because I think I'm going to leave next week and go back down to Texas. Ken calls me and says, look, I spent your money. And I says, what? He says, I spent your money. All you of know. it? I had to pay bills, I had to pay my car registration. I almost fainted, I, I couldn't tell you. I was, my knees got buckled, I said, oh, Lord. And yeah, but it was... He, he spent had, all the money? No, I didn't spend all. I spent approximately 4000 Did you give him any of the money back? Yes, I gave him 2500 back. Okay. But the reason I spent it was because Gerald would have took the money and went to the dope man and smoked it up. I knew that. So for me, to watch it go to them instead of me, paying my rent and having a roof over my kids' heads for while I'm unemployed and I'm pounding the payment looking for employment and him doing that, that was an easy choice for me. Uh, no. He owed me. No. He owed me that from the prior, no. you know, years of me taking care of him. No. Mm -hmm. No. It wasn't going to the door. Was there an no. issue with drugs going on with you uh, at the time? Be before that, before the accident, yes, it was. And I think that he well, What's your actually, status now? Uh, right now, uh, the last time I used was maybe about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You know, very little bit. Uh, the so last of time I had lying. a drink was... So you're trying. You're so trying I'm, I'm, you know, to get yourself yeah, on the right been... track. Do you have any money left from the settlement? No. No. But at least have an account for it. And I wrote down everything that I spent. And it wasn't for them to understand. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for my girlfriend to understand. It was for me to understand. It was my money. The well, I mean, what you, said, what you just said right then yeah. is really the key to this case, and that's what I want you to understand. I have to decide if you owe him this money or if you have a proper legal defense as to why you haven't paid him back. And from what I've heard from you today, everything you've done for him over the years, you think he owes you, but that wasn't the agreement. Yes, I understand So what that. you're saying is not a legal defense, sir, to you not returning the money to him. And I think that with everything you've told me today, the real reason why you kept the money is because you needed it. That you told it. me you were down and out, you have been laid off from your job, you were in a really bad place. You needed the money, and so you spent it. That's just the bottom line. You know, I know that you say you've done so much for him, but, you know, you should have let him know and communicated to him that you really needed it and what the situation was. But at the end of the day, this is a, a court of law, so I find that you owe Mr. Clipper $3,223 verdict in this case for the plaintiff.
good luck to both of you. Thank you. Plaintiff Gail Weiler says that when she finally decided to move from her apartment after paying rent for almost two years, her landlord refused to do a proper walkthrough and failed to return the full amount of her security deposit. Defendant Gina Phillips says she deducted only the cost of the damaged items and provided an itemized list for the plaintiff to review. She says that she owes nothing more to the plaintiff and is countersuing for gardening expenses. Gail Weiler? Yes. You are suing the defendant Gina Phillips? Yes. For $1,045 for the return of a security deposit? Correct. So you are counter suing, ma'am, for $1,105 for gardener's expenses? Yes. We'll start with you, Ms. Weiler. When did you move in to the defendant's property? Um, the early part of November 2013. I think it was November 4th. Okay, and is this a house or an apartment? It is a house. Okay, and how long have you owned the home, ma'am? Since 1986. Okay. And did the two of you sign a lease? Yes, we did. Do you have a copy of it? Yes, I do. How long was the duration of the lease? Uh, originally, it was for two years, Your Honor. And so during that two-year time period, did you have any problems collecting the rent from the plaintiff or anything like that? Not at all. Okay, so she was never late on her rent? No. Okay, great. Okay, and what about you? When you were living in the home, were there any issues? Yes, there were. From the beginning, uh, when I agreed to a two-year lease, I was uh, under the assumption that there were certain agreements that we were going to make, and one was um, that she would pay for the water, and in the beginning, we would uh, take care of the yard. I was, when you say we, who do you mean? Um, it was my partner at the time was living there as well. Okay. And we trimmed all the hedges that were kind of overgrown, and we... Um, tried to do our best and, according to Gina, uh, failed to meet her standards. Right, and that's the basis for your counterclaim, right? Correct. Did you pay a security deposit when you moved in? Yes, I did. How much was that? $1,700. And when you moved out, how much of that security deposit did you get back? I got back approximately $1,000, uh, but that included a week of prorated rent. So I think the actual security deposit was around $700. Okay, and so that's why you're suing for the for remainder the of your security deposit. Yeah. Now, you kept $1,045 of, of the security deposit. Correct. Was for I did some rent. itemized deductions, and okay. I have a, a list of the deductions. Okay, so I want you to tell me about the money that you deducted from her security deposit. You say there were damages and, and other issues with the gardening. There was a lot of deferred maintenance, Your Honor, around the property. It's one thing to be expected to, um, you know, maintain a property, but I, I wasn't in a financial position to catch up some of her deferred maintenance, so to speak. So you're suing for gardening expenses, but didn't Correct. at some point, because I, I see the lease, mm -hmm. and the lease did state clearly that she was responsible for maintaining the yard. Correct, and she did not honor that. But, but then there's a point where you take over the responsibilities because for the yard. Because she neglected the lawn. She wasn't going to do it. Well, but ma'am, that, that was in May of 2013. Correct, And yes. you move out in... Uh, July 24th, 2014. Okay, so that's over a year. Coming up on Judge Faith, is her landlord overcharging for wear and tear? Unauthorized removal of bathroom blinds. The reason those are left out on the porch is because she locked me out of the house before I could put them back up in the bathroom. And I didn't charge her to be put them back up. I, but I that is so offered nice of you. I didn't. Plaintiff Gail Weiler is suing her landlord for the full amount of her security deposit. Defendant Gina Phillips says she owes nothing more because of damages to the property. There's a point where you take over the responsibilities because for the yard. Because she neglected the lawn. She wasn't going to do it. So Correct. you're maintaining the yard for over a year. How are you suing for her not maintaining the, the yard? Only reason I was only responsible for water only. In their lease, they were to maintain the yard on a monthly basis, and they neglected. it. Then um, I was, received a phone call where someone told me, Jeannie, you might want to drive by your house. It's not looking good. And that's when I drove by. I then uh, took a few pictures of the property because it was grass was overgrown, hedges were overgrown. But you do understand, ma'am, that tenants don't take care of yards like it's their own but property. But it's written in... Like I, you would. You know, exactly. I mean, it's one thing to cut the grass, but it's another thing if you want them to prune the hedges and right, plant rose bushes. Right, but she wasn't even cutting the because grass. Because they're not going to do that. Correct. But she wasn't even cutting the grass. Because here, I have emails submitted to the court where in May of 2013, you take over the landscaping. Correct. So you can't then come in and sue for her not taking care of the yard. Your Honor, if I may, um, 
I wouldn't have even had to sue her if she had been honorable about our agreement to leave the property early and to work together on um, you know, presenting the property back to her in good standing. We, she never discussed the backyard being like, expecting me to re-soil, re, re and correct you the, the inoperable die. things. Let so let me ask you, you this, Ms. Phillips, let me ask you this, because mm -hmm. you provided a list of the damages you say, and, and now you know you've been a landlord for a, a number of years now, mm -hmm. and you know that a tenant is only responsible for damages beyond normal wear and tear. You have a tenant who's lived in your home for 20 months. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I have a list of things you say you deducted from her security deposit that are beyond normal wear and tear. So I want to look at some photos that the plaintiff submitted to court. Okay. Okay, this is the kitchen area. This is after she moved out. That's how the kitchen looked, I correct? Took, yeah, I took that during the quick walkthrough, if you can call it that. I mean, it's virtually spotless. Yes. Let's go to the next, because you charged her for professional cleaning, so that's why I'm asking. Okay, this is the living room area. Again, virtually spotless. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next photo. Looks great. What room is this, ma'am? This is the dining room, uh, living room, and that is her plant that I took care of and watered for a year and a half. I mean, the home <laughs> looks That's beautiful. Yeah. She asked for it. You asked for it. You asked me to leave it. Let's be real, Gail. You asked me Ms. to Phillips. leave it. You Come asked on. me to leave it. Ms. Phillips, said, okay. does the plant look good? It's wonderful. Okay. She took good let's care go to of the next my photo. plant. Yes, she did. <laughs> Now let's look at your let's look at your your evidence that you submitted. Okay. Oh, you say she left horrible. behind debris. Ma'am, what is that? I had a tree service. I had a tree that had some damage and I had to hire some professionals to come and they asked for the people to leave wood for fire. So you're deducting that from the deposit. Okay, we're not well, going to no, do that. that. Let's well, go to the next one. Okay. Backyard where there was grass, now there's no grass. Now you've been maintaining this for a year, so how is that her fault? She didn't water. Let's go to the next photo. <laughs> Unauthorized removal of bathroom blinds left outside. Is this the, I mean, is this the best we can do here in terms of damages? She, well, is... what happened, she did not get permission to remove the blinds. Okay. When I, we did the walkthrough, that's And you're when keeping discovered... $1,000 of her security I'm deposit? I'm not keeping $1,000. I don't know why, why, why you keep saying $1,000. It's not $1,000 that's withheld. It's $1,000. You deducted I, I... the total for damages, as you have listed here, $1,055.09, yes. correct? Okay. Correct. So the total that you subtracted that she say you illegally subtracted is okay. $1,055. Correct. Okay? Okay. All right, what do you want to say? Oh, well, I, could I address that picture? Yes. Um, the reason those are left out on the porch is because during our so-called walkthrough, she took the keys and she locked me out of the house before I could put them back up in the bathroom. And I didn't charge her to be put them back up. I, but I that is so offered, nice of you. I didn't. I didn't charge her to put them back up. <laughs> Thank you. You are so she never got my. She never got my permission to remove them. So here's what else, here's what else you took off for. Do we have another photo? We have two more? I, let me see them. Excessive. This is yeah, you. that was. I'm not charging her for all of that. I'm just letting her know. Excessive hair in the yeah, drain. Yeah, that was just photos of how she left my house. Now, Judge Faith rules. My question to you is: After okay. someone lives in a house for 20 months, correct? Do you not think there's there may be some mildew in the shower? I expect her to be responsible and clean it. But do you think that's beyond normal wear and tear? No, but in the least. It states that I am to receive my property back in the identical condition that the tenant received well, it. Well, then we're all wasting okay, a bunch of time so, here because it's actually stop. clean. That's stop. It, that's it. So I'm glad I heard what you think, Ms. Phillips, because I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay. I think you owe her $1,055.09, which is the rest of her security deposit, and I'm ordering you to pay that, ma'am, just before the plaintiff. But she is. paid it. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.